It's the off season of Intercounty GA, as we all know, in the split season, and it gives us an opportunity to talk to some of the managers who finished up, and uh, we'll start talking to some of the, the new managers over the, the coming weeks as well. But I'm delighted to say the former Donegal football manager, Declan Boner, is with us. Declan, good morning to you. How are you getting on? Good morning. How are you? Yeah, good form now. Not bad. Have you made peace with the fact that you're the former Donegal manager? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, no, listen, enjoy my time away now. Uh, maybe come to, to one tour nights again, and uh, maybe a little or not in the do, you might want to get back out again. But no, at the minute, no, it's great, to be quite honest. Uh, nice to get the break. Did you know you were going to finish up this year at the start of the year? Was that always part of your plan, did you think? Yeah, it was, to be quite honest. Um, yeah, we wanted to finish on a, on a high, and, it, you know, we didn't get that opportunity. We got an opportunity, we didn't take it. But uh, listen, yeah, um, it's um, it was a test in a couple of years, to be quite honest. Um, but uh, ultimately, we came up short this year. Uh, you know, the Ulster, Ulster final, and especially... The last 15, 20 minutes of that was disappointing. The fact that we didn't go on to win it. So, yeah, disappointing end, end to the campaign. But, yeah, listen, it was enjoyable. Uh, it was testing. There was a lot of, over the five years, you know, a lot of things happened. But, uh, yeah, it was uh, it was, it was was an exciting uh, journey, quite honest. What was the most testing part now when you're looking back on it going, Jesus, I can't believe we came through that? Yeah, I suppose, listen, we, when I came in in 2017, it was the first championship it was 2018, 2019, and we, we went back to back. Uh, with, with both Ulster champions uh, and championships, uh, probably yeah, naturally the most testing time for everyone would have been the uh, March 2020 when when everything shut down. And that that to me was a real testing period, to be quite honest. You know, we felt we managed it okay. There was a lot of Zoom calls. Uh, you know, uh, we didn't have much, uh, little or no interaction with, with players in terms of getting on the pitch. But once we got back in, you know, we we I, t- I felt we, we were back playing reasonably well, and we came on stuck then in, in uh, the Ulster final. And I think it was difficult from then on, to be quite honest. Uh, you know, th- th- that was a big big defeat for us against Cavan and in, in, in Ulster final 2020. Because you were so heavily favoured, because you felt like there was a big opportunity, you know, over the next couple of weeks after that, if you'd got through to. I know those those winter games. Um, certainly, that Dublin team seemed more beatable than in the high summer when they were doing their five in a row, which ultimately becomes the six after after COVID. Uh, is that it? Was it that there was an opportunity lost there that you couldn't get back? Yeah, I, th- I think that's yeah, that's part of it. You know, we we actually played we, we played Tyrone and our man and the uh, Tyrone first round twenty twenty that was probably played around September heavy conditions. We played our man. In Breffney Park, and the game performed really, really well. We won the game. The game was over at half time. Um, we got to the Ulster final, and again, you know, it was surreal. Uh, you know, no, no crowds. The game wasn't in Clonus. It was played on a November dark evening in the Athletic Grounds. Uh, that's not taken away from Cavan. Cavan deserved their victory on tonight. You know, it was a huge opportunity. No doubt about that. There, huge opportunity for us. We we had never gone three in a row in Ulster and also a real opportunity to have a an all Ireland semi final slot. Uh, so there was a lot of a lot of uh, a lot at stake. And uh, you know, for one reason or another, we, we didn't we had enough ball uh, in that game and we didn't take our opportunities. And Gavin got that late goal and listen, uh, that's where championships are won and lost on, on those small margins and uh, you know we come up short that evening. Good. The same thing happened to Kerry, sorry, like the exact same thing happened to Kerry against Cork where, you know, the, the team from the lower division catches them in the very last minute of the game and there's no time to get back and there's no back door and it really felt like that Donegal team, as you say, because the, the semi-final was such a, a brilliant performance that you were ready to pull it up to Dublin. Yeah, listen, exactly. We, we felt we were very, very close, you know, over, over that period. And, uh, you know, even going into the 2021 campaign, even though we found it, you know, it was slightly, uh, we, we had a reasonable league campaign. The, the, the league campaign was split into two groups. So we had uh, Tyrone, our man, Munnan, was a, a mini Ulster championship, and we came out on top of that there. And, uh, you know, we played, I think, down the first round of the championship in 21, um, and then we lost to Tyrone. And a match that we were just about to take control of, we went two points up and we had an opportunity, we missed a penalty and, and then Michael got sent off a couple of minutes after that and uh, we didn't get back and ultimately Tyrone went on to win the All-Ireland in, in, in 2021. So yeah, those are the margins and, and uh, as I say, this year in terms of the campaign, uh, you know, the we beat beaten our man in, in the last league game in, in O'Donnell Park, a venue that we hadn't won in for a long, long time and uh, that... that we we remain Division One football for 2023, 
Um, beat our man in a really good performance, first round of the championship, beat Cav in semi final. And we knew Derry, Derry had been, you know, momentum, Derry had been gathering momentum. We, I'd watched them against Tyrone, against Monaghan, and, you know, we went in in a particular way. And I felt even if I had to go back out tomorrow morning to play that game, I would do the exact same thing. We felt this game was going to go down to the wire. Went into that last quarter, though we were two points up, and to me, that's where the, the major major disappointment lay. That we didn't go on to win that game, and that's uh, that's a huge disappointment uh, because that game was there to be won at that stage, and we just didn't grasp it. Was there a frustration in, in that tackling? Especially, I think a lot of people in the analysis immediately after that game were were, were sort of like. It was, it was quite cagey. Neither team wanted to, to, to really push on and, and con- obviously concede a point. Um, hindsight, as we've been saying already this morning, is, is twenty twenty. but there must be frustration in, in those last few minutes especially. Yeah, no doubt about that. Uh, huge, huge frustration. We had one set out to play when, we, when I took over, you know, played a lot of attack and football. And, uh, you know, when, you, when we look back, and we still had... The nucleus of, of, of a strong defensive unit with the likes of Anthony Thompson, Leo McLoon, Paddy McGrath, Neil McGee were all part of that defensive unit. And gradually, as those guys moved moved away, you know, we probably found it difficult to replace those type of defenders. Uh, and ultimately, we we had to balance our, our our game in terms of what our attack was going to look like and what our defensive shape was going to look like. And uh, you know, watching Derry, you know, Derry were a counter attacking team, and that's where they, they, they really hurt. Tyrone and Monaghan and really blew those teams away uh, and, and those championship games so we felt that we were you know if we could match that and murder that going into it and, and being that game going into that final state together and also in front uh, that we would kick on and that's what well, yeah that was the disappointment that we didn't kick on because that game was there to be won at that stage and, and uh, we didn't take it you know we uh, spoke directly to, to Jack Cooney, the outgoing Westmeath manager on the show recently, and he, he was talking about the, the stresses of intercounty management and, and, and how high profile it is, I guess, compared to being involved in the club game. Like, did, you, did you find that yourself, that that's maybe one of the reasons why, why you're stepping away, that it's, you know, it's quite a goldfish bowl and a lot of, lot of high pressure and, and high focus for such a long time of the year? Mm. Sorry, yeah, listen, at, at this, there's no doubt, but it's a lot of pressure. It's different than when I was back in 20, 20, 20 years ago. Um, I, I took the first first time I was only coming out of, out of retirement a couple of months and I took the job in 1997 and I took them through to the millennium through to 2000 so th- different time different setups different backups you know the social media was not uh, was not an issue uh, which it has now become and you can see you know in terms of trying to fill these posts at the moment you know you, you have the top still the top eight teams in the country Donegal Roscommon and Monon's still looking for for managers and, and, and find it very, very difficult to get anyone to come in. Yeah, listen, I, I knew what was ahead of me when I came in. I've been in, I've been in, in the position in terms of coming through the minor or the minors and under 21s for five years, coming into seniors, and I knew exactly what was ahead of me. And ultimately, you know, to manage your county, to play for your county, huge, huge honour and uh, delighted to, to have been afforded that opportunity. And uh, listen, it's it is a huge commitment, there's no doubt. You've got to get that balance right between your work commitment, your family commitment, and 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 an intercounty manager, which is a huge, huge job and a huge, huge commitment. Is that difficult? Yeah, it can be. You, you need a lot of a lot of understanding people. To be quite honest, you know, you need a very understanding um, family. Number one, which is you know ultimately where you end up going back every evening, and you have to get that time and right and. Uh, and ultimately your, your work you know if your work suffered then you know that's going to be an issue but uh, luckily i've been uh, afforded the opportunity for my employees to, to, to go out and do this job which you know uh, it was a big undertaking but also as i said a huge huge honor to be quite honest and uh, you know for any ambitious young manager out there that wants to get at it it's uh, you know it, it is, it's, a, it's a huge it is a huge commitment but again once you're in that it's it is a goldfish bowl there's no doubt about that there you're really you're really locked into it and uh, you know the time and the hours that you spend you know, you don't really think about it. You touched on on uh, social media there, Declan, and and like that 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 is a uh, and I think it's been said as well that that's one of the reasons why the Donegal search for a new manager has been uh, low key or at least off the record, and not many names are coming up officially. Um, is that something you find yourself as well that the abuse on social media, Twitter, and Instagram, and all the rest? Um, it's it's gotten worse in the last number of years. Yeah, it has, there's no doubt it has, and there's people that just I mean it doesn't matter if it's Gaelic football, it could be Donegal GA this week, it could be Finn Harps next week, it could be the national soccer team, it could be anything at all. These guys are just sitting back 
I don't think they have too much to do, to be quite honest. I think a lot of these just sit in the house on, the, on, on their keyboards day in, day out to see who, who's the next hack. But uh, listen, I don't, you know, it's easy to probably say I don't get involved in that space. I don't, uh, you know, but I still have a lot of family. If my, my, my children are, you know, at that age, they're all they're all into that. And, you know, it does probably have an effect to a degree, but as I say, it goes over my head, to be quite honest. But uh, And you do need to have a certain personality about you if you're going into county management that, you know, you've got to, you've got to switch off and, and switch away from that, you know. I know um, Rory Kavanagh and uh, Martin McHugh's names particularly have been mentioned in Donegal in, in the last uh, couple of weeks in terms of the, the successor to yourself. Like, Is this, this going to be an Alex Ferguson case where you get to anoint your, your successor with a sword? <laughs> no, listen, uh, you know, I think there's a great group of players there, to be quite honest. They're an absolutely outstanding group of players. And, uh, you know, I think it's important that we do get the right person in there, whether that takes another couple of weeks or a couple of months where we've got to get someone in now to make sure that, you know, these guys are... They're in Division One. To me, we're, we're still a top four or five team, and it's about trying to push on now. And uh, you know, as I said before, it's an attractive job. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, it brings its, its pressures and and its commitments, but uh, yeah, it's a huge, huge opportunity for somebody to come in and take it on. Can I just ask you to go back to the <clears throat> the impact of the Cavan game? Do you feel like that had an impact in the last 10, 15 minutes of the game against Derry? That there's actually a little bit of a psychological hangover when you go through the trauma of losing an Ulster final that way that you kind of you revert, you revert to your shell a little bit as opposed to thinking oh look this is our opportunity here all we've got to do now is is play to our best because that it seems like the, the frustration was the game was there to be won but you couldn't go and do it even though you'd set the team up in a way to put yourselves in that situation so I'm wondering is there can you draw a line from the the fallout of the Cavan game it's very difficult because yeah we, we've spoken about it at, at actually and it will come up you know over the last couple of years uh you know did we get over it? it's very difficult you know probably the answer lies the fact that we didn't go on to win that and you can still harp back had it a a real real uh psychological effect and probably it did have to a degree there's no doubt about it i, I can you know can safely say that um you know at that stage we probably looked like a team you know instead of when we went two points up that we didn't kick on that maybe that fear of losing uh, instead of just going out to win that game, you know, maybe that's easy saying now, but you know, that's probably how it felt, you know, after the game. But uh, yeah, it was, there's no doubt that it was a huge, disappoint, huge disappointment, you know, absolutely, you know. And so then the like the draw happens and you've got Armagh again, and I'm sure everybody's just like, oh my god, we're sick and we're sick of the side of these lads, we've already beaten them twice this year, you know, to beat to beat a team a third time is going to be tricky. Was it just very difficult to recover from? The defeat against Derry is that why you weren't able to perform the way you were able to perform against Armagh earlier, and also the fact that Armagh was obviously a much better team coming through the qualifiers. Um, yeah, it's always just you know the week, the days after a uh, provincial championship final defeat is it's very very disappointing. We took the I think we went back on the tours tonight, and uh, in fairness to the lads, we, we trained that Thursday and then we took the weekend, played the week, uh, trained the weekend, and got ready for for the challenge of Armagh. And I felt when into our market, even though we got off to a bad start, that uh, we probably played our best football in 2022 for the next 20, 20, 23, 24 minutes. I think we tied on with nine scores, playing the football that we knew we were capable of playing, getting our kickers away uh, between mid range, long range, getting long range scores. Kieran Thompson, Michael Langan, Michael Murphy, all getting good long range scores. We went into it, I think, three or four point lead. And we got done by. Uh, just a couple of moments of madness and those sort of moments that we don't seem to recover from and we give away a penalty. Uh, Sean got, got, a, got a black card and ultimately from being, I think, three, four points up, we went, we came in at half time with three points down and uh, we, it was, again, you know, it was just difficult then the second half. But, uh, yeah, Armagh went on and I said Armagh were gaining momentum also and we're very, very lucky not to get over the line against Galway. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting looking on at Gaelic Games at the minute, Declan, and the extra ingredient in terms of the coaching uh, setup that, that teams need. Like, you look at Kieran Donaghy going in with, at Armagh and Paddy Talley with, uh, with Kerry. Uh, and look, you had Stephen Rochford with, with you up in Donegal for the last couple of years. And he's obviously gone in now in, into the Mayo coaching ticket with, with Kevin McStay. Like, what, what, what did you see from, from being up close with, with, with Stephen uh, that maybe he's going to bring now into the, into the Mayo setup under Kevin? Yeah, listen, uh, Steve is a quality coach and, you know, hugely committed to whatever job he, he goes into. You know, 
Stephen lives on the Galway border then and Ballon Robe and it's it's almost a three hour trek from from there to go to Convoy three day three to four days a week and uh, you know probably count on the one hand that maybe the sessions you missed over the four years and uh, hugely committed and uh, hugely organised and uh, yeah I think it'll work well with with, with Kevin this day I think he he rallies the coaching role I think there's a there's a differ differential now between you know being a team manager and and, and the coaches before this the team manager would have done a a lot of the coaching also, but that's that day's that day's gone now. To be quite honest, because there's so much other stuff going on, but uh, I think he rallies that the, the coaching aspect and uh, he's top quality. You know, he's obviously jumped straight back in from one role to, to the next. Like, is is your plan now to, to kind of take that break? Uh, like, there's not obviously you, you mentioned the Monaghan and, and Ross Common vacancies. Like, there's not there's nothing uh, floating your boat at the minute. You wouldn't um, you'd have no problem taking over another Ulster team, perhaps. <laughs> uh, not at the minute anyway, I'm putting a call, sure. as a Monaghan man here I'm putting a call out Declan we're desperate for no, someone, so. <laughs> uh, listen here it's it, it, you know my plan is to take take the year out to be quite honest uh, I'll do uh, I'll do things now that I haven't done over the past five years but I know we'll maybe come into next season that you know at his feet again and, and maybe come back and do something but listen I'll see what happens I'm still heavily involved in the club here um, I'm chairman of the club here this last eight, eight years also and uh we're getting ready to play a quarter final of a junior championship match the weekend on Saturday. So looking forward to that there and taking the odd session with the club. So enjoying that. And uh yeah, no, listen, it's it's uh, it's nice just to get the break away from it, to be quite honest. I know the you were in goals, I think, for your club at one point point last <laughs> year. The odd session slash playing a little bit. Is that it? Is that no, I think that's that now that that, that day's definitely gone. But uh, <laughs> no, listen, enjoyed it. If we were stuck again, I would step in. It's a small, small club and we're working on again a very small pool of players at that stage. We whatever I think I ended up uh, a Nets in a, two years ago in a junior championship, two, a couple of matches because uh, both keepers had gone and uh, I was I went I stood in for for a number of matches. But uh, no, nah, listen, nothing beats playing and and uh, but uh, those days are well behind me now at this stage. One last thing: uh, the split season is something that's um, up for debate. This is the first full year of it properly, and you know I think maybe we need to make our mind up at the end of it. But a lot of people are are saying that. Um, we're starting to see some negatives. Maybe if the intercounty season were ex- was extended for an extra four or six weeks, that might change things. What's your view on it as somebody who's been at the coal face of it now over the last number of years? It's, 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 yeah, the question always comes up, but it's, it's trying to get that balance right because, as I say, I'm heavily involved in the club and I understand the club, the club perspective. But, you know, I just do feel that the season's finished far too early, to be quite honest, you know. You know, we had really good weather over the last four, five, six weeks, and I mean, no other county matches. You know, this is the showcase. These, these are these are the, the the teams and the weather where you want to go out and watch games and you know televise games. Yeah, we had all that back in, in, in May, June, but the weather again. You know, it's always fairly uh, iffy. You know, we started off our campaign last year. If you go back to, oh, we would have gone back into pre-season sometime in November. Uh, December, uh, horrendous conditions, and then you you start your national league campaign, and we went up to play uh, Mayo and Markovic Park, and the weather was absolutely, you know, it, it was horrendous. Uh, I think TG Carr were, had real difficulty trying to get control of the camera, and, you know, just a, it's not a great site for you know watching your, your your premier game and top teams involved. And we would only carry the exact same. There was a gale force one blown that day was absolutely horrendous. So don't I mean football in January is just an absolute wash it to be quite honest. I think that the season needs to go back and start a league sometime in February and maybe extend it four to six weeks which I think would would, would sort out a few problems. But uh, I think it's finished far too early. I didn't get the same buzz even around the All Ireland final this year at Kemlin. It went fairly quickly. So I think that needs to be extended. Uh put a tweak in here and there, you know. Uh, it's funny reading the Colin Collins, the Clare manager, in the the back page of the the papers, some of the papers this morning. Declan, he's talking about uh, some of the rules, and I think the back page of the Irish Independent, he's, he's speaking about um, you know maybe taking some pressure off the referees in terms of timekeeping for sin bins and that sort of thing. But he also interestingly he speaks about the uh, the attacking mark um, as something that he's he's not a major fan of. He, he, I think he he basically said that you know for for midfielders the mark is potentially a good thing but that the, the greater skill for a full forward would, would maybe be to catch the ball and lay it off to, to a runner so like, what, what's your take on, on some of those rules involved in the game in particular the attacking mark Listen I think that, I think in terms of the timekeeping I think that's worked extremely well and, and the ladies game I don't see any reason why it, why it, why it can't be implemented into the, into the men's game uh, to mark I was never a fan of it uh, to be quite honest uh, I, you know, I think it, it hasn't served the purpose it was there for 
uh, you know, people are taking advantage maybe of a 40, and, and once you're actually a 45, a 20 yard dink pass, and you're, you're collecting the ball on the ground and the game's held up, it's a, it's a mark. Uh, and even if, if you want a high ball inside, you know, I look back to the, the goal that Michael Murphy got. I know you have the option to play it on, but, uh, you know, that ball coming in and, and a full forward running that ball and, and, and turning and taking his man on back of the net or over the bar, I think that's a great skill. And I think that's been taken out of the game now. And to me, it, it hasn't served that purpose. Now, I would, I would be one. I'd like to see it go to be quite honest Declan good stuff thanks a million for joining us this morning and congratulations on your career and, and whatever comes next no problem thanks very much Lance thank you it's uh, Declan Bonner there giving us some thoughts on his time at